So recently, uh, John Kelly might have made the president a little bit angry by suggesting in a recent interview uh, that the president was uninformed on the wall and had evolved his position. Uh, Now, according to the New York Times, when Trump heard this, he started out being like, oh, oh, okay, well, did I evolve? Maybe I, I don't know if I've, you know what? I did evolve. Trump, later on, while at first, after talking to his friends and, and, and allies, became convinced that Kelly had undermined him, according to people familiar with the conversations, uh, and by Thursday morning, after digesting accounts of Mr. Kelly's comments on cable news, the president had become furious. Because, of course, the biggest crime in Trump world is to make it seem that other people are in charge or are managing Trump or that Trump's a child. Now, Trump is a child, and he is being managed by many different people, one of them including John Kelly, who's kind of like the babysitter for this whole thing, right? Now, later on, you could see his frustration in his tweets when he tweeted out, the wall is a wall that has never changed or evolved from the first day I conceived of it. Uh, that's wrong. <laughs> Survey says that's a lie. Um, he's evolved actually on plenty of things when it comes to the wall. First off, who's supposed to pay for the wall? Mexico. Mexico was supposed to pay for the wall. Uh, but now for some reason that he's willing to shut down the government over funding for the wall. But wait a minute. If, if Mexico is paying for the wall, then why do you have to get money from the taxpayer? Why do you have to have money for Congress? I guess apparently Mexico's not paying for the wall. Is it? Are they? That's an evolution. I know Republicans, they don't believe in evolution, or at least a lot of them don't. Uh, so they get, of course, riled up whenever you mention evolution. No, no, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Well, Trump's the same way. Uh, I guess he does not, again, he does not want uh, anyone to believe that he is not the smartest person in the room, that he's not coming up with every fantastic idea. Okay. Anyway, they continue. Later in the morning, the president spoke to his chief of staff and made his displeasure clear, according to two people familiar with the conversation. So look, this is a situation that actually plays out pretty regularly inside the White House. Trump cannot stand to be managed, as I said before, um, or even have the appearance. Now, that was the problem with Steve Bannon, right? That was the thing that pissed him off the most about Steve Bannon. No, no, what are you talking about? Bannon? No, no, he doesn't control me. No, he's not running things by the way. He played a very minimal role in my White House. Uh, he barely gave any advice, and I didn't even listen to it. No, nope, not at all. So, I, when um, a close Trump friend and confidant told Jonathan Swan of Axios yesterday that John Kelly was going into Bannon territory, watch out. You don't want to be in Bannon territory um, because that, again, that perception could cost you your position, could cost you your job, right? So, and, and of course, Kelly doesn't want to be seen as a glorified babysitter, even, that, even though that's exactly what he's being seen, not only as the media, uh, by the media as, but from people inside the White House. According to people who have observed him, he often positions himself as a one-man check against dangerous or reckless moves by the commander-in-chief. He says his loyalty is not to the president, but to the Constitution and the country, according to uh, two people with direct knowledge of the remarks. Mr. Kelly, officials say, has made a conscious decision not to focus as much on curbing the president's penchant for tweeting or saying inflammatory things, because you you can't stop him from doing that, Uh, and to instead pour his efforts into controlling who sees and talks to Mr. Trump and trying to shape his thinking on key issues. So part of that was him getting rid of Omarosa. Omarosa was causing all sorts of problems. In fact, one of the things that she was doing when she was in the White House before John Kelly had arrived is she would get uh, articles about things that people said in media that were negative about Donald Trump. And she would go and she would take these things and she would go and bring them to the president. Be like, oh, dude, hey, look look at what Joe Scarborough said about you today. Oh, God damn it. Morning, Joe. I hate those guys. So <laughs> that's part of what she would do. And, of course, that would rile him up 
for the entire day. He'd be pissed for hours, and he'd be tweeting ridiculous things. Not that that stopped at all, but nonetheless, he'd be tweeting more ridiculous things. So, of course, when Kelly uh, became chief of staff, he shut that shit down. And eventually, Omarosa did leave the White House after all, because she didn't have any access to the president. Nobody had any access. Not even Steve Bannon had access anymore without going through John Kelly. So that's one of the things that he did. Now, the way that he was able to get so much power and to get the president to do the things that he said, uh, like, again, for example, getting rid of Omarosa is using his re leverage. And let me give you an example of how he used that leverage or how he even got the leverage in the first place. Early in his tenure, Mr. Keller frequently threatened to quit as a way of getting people, particularly the president, to follow his orders, according to four people close to Mr. Trump. One advisor to the president said it was among the few weapons in Mr. Kelly's arsenal. Another said that he used it less regularly now. Well, now that it's been established, absolutely. So now that they know, like, hey, man, look, I, I ain't going away. I, I'm going to get my way, so or else I'm out of here. And now it just goes on set. Okay. Now, that's the reason that Kelly is still there. And an, an, a, among some of the other reasons that Kelly is still there is because he actually is a lot like Trump in some ways. Both Mr. Trump and Mr. Kelly, according to the Times, are used to being in charge. And both are prone to dramatic outbursts of temper, according to interviews with half a dozen White House officials. Kelly has also been known to storm out of meetings or briefings if they take a direction that he doesn't like. He has also repeatedly barked orders at senior advisors who have conversations with Mr. Trump that Mr. Kelly did not authorize. So basically, he's just not taking shit, right? So I think in that way, they're both... I I'm going to veer into alt-rightish kind of territory... Uh, here when it comes to this, but they're both apparently alpha, the big alpha males, right? They're the big alpha monkeys that are managing their staff, right? I mean, Trump wants to be the alpha monkey, but he's not exactly good at it because he's a moron. And John Kelly, he is the alpha, right? So, and of course, he's just making sure that Trump doesn't see him that way. Oh, no, no, Donald, here's your banana, right? He just, you know, I'm not managing you. No, no, I'm just helping you. I'm just helping you. Okay. Now, uh, both also have, uh, have a tendency, and this is similarity still, to say different things to different audiences as Mr. Kelly is more strident about the need to restrict immigration than some people had realized. So that's something that they, I guess they have in common, or at least you can see the effect of. Because Donald Trump doesn't care one way or the other. If you think that's something that he, he actually cares about illegal immigration, he actually cares about, you know, building the wall, no. No. The reason that he was so stringent on the wall is because it plays really well with his audience. He says, oh, I'm going to build a wall, right? And they cheer and they cheer and they cheer. So he's like, oh, I'm going to keep going with this. I'm going to build a wall. I'm going to build a wall. But at some points it was a fence. And at this point, he has adopted what was Hillary Clinton's position. We're going to build a fence in some places. I mean, he didn't say fence specifically, but he said, well, we're going to have a see-through wall. Well, what's a see-through wall? It's a fence. They're not making out of making it out of transparent aluminum, okay? It's a fence, which is Hillary Clinton's position. That's, and, 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 of course, when you realize that, it's kind of fucking hilarious that he's pushing for this, right? But anyway, now, <clears throat> despite their similarity on immigration, right, and I think it's more of Kelly and Bannon's influence on Trump that uh, led him to that position, right, uh, they have some differences as well, and their difference mainly is style. Now, Mr. Trump favors chaos, and Mr. Kelly believes in strict command and control. And while Mr. Trump believes in his abilities as a salesman, Mr. Kelly is unused to being thrust in front of the national political spotlight. And you can see that when he gave that ridiculous press conference before um, where he essentially lied for Trump uh, when, it came to, uh, when it came to the soldiers that died in uh, Africa. Okay. Anyway. So the question is, right? So is this latest blow up 
is this is this going to be the beginning of the end of Cali? And, and I give you all that context to think about that, right? I mean, look, after all, one source close to the White House did say how Kelly was, again, venturing into abandoned territory. You don't want to be in abandoned territory. Now, <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure how this is going to end up, right? And I, I, I don't, I'm not even sure about making a prediction about how this is going to end up. I mean, they are similar in a lot of ways. Kelly is more than happy to lie on his behalf and to try to kiss his ass. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, that said, we also thought the same thing about Bannon. That Bannon uh, wasn't going to lose his position in the White House, nor was did we ever think that he was going to be throw un, thrown under the bus the way that he has. So we'll have to see. But I can say one thing. If Kelly ends up being fired, <laughs> because I don't think that he'll quit, I think he actually does see this as my patriotic duty to make sure that Trump doesn't blow up the world. Well, then, if he does get fired, then prepare to see the White House slide back into complete and total dysfunction instead of only partial dysfunction. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.